Welcome to lecture 19 on stochastic processes. Uh, today I will discuss two problems and their solutions. Uh, I have taken these problem from GATE 2019 statistics exam and one problem from CSIR exam. So we will see that uh, uh, these competitive exams uh, do not ask very, dif uh, very difficult problem. They are very straightforward if you know the concepts. So the first problem is from uh, GATE 2019 statistics exam, the question number 37. What it says, it says that consider a discrete time mark of chain on the state space 1, 2 with one step transition probability matrix P given by rho by 0.2, 0.8, 0.3, 0 0.7. Then we have to find limit n tending to infinite P to the power n is. Option A, option B, option C, option D. So we have to find limit of p to the power n. So we have seen that uh, if uh, your Markov chain is finite and if it is irreducible and aperiodic, then p to the power n is nothing but the uh, stationary distribution. So that means uh, uh, we can find the stationary probability distribution and based on stationary probability distribution, we can find p to the power n, limit of p to the power n. So this is the, uh, this is the transition graph. We have a state 1 and state 2. From 1 to 1, the probability is 0.2. That means there is a self loop of probability 0.2. From 1 to 2, the probability of transition is 0.8. From 2 to 1, the probability of transition is 0.3 and from 2 to 2 it is 0.7. So from this transition graph, one can easily see that 1 and 2 communicates each other. That means this Markov chain is irreducible. Okay. So what we are observing? We are observing three things. Finite Markov chain. Finite Markov chain. Why finite Markov chain? Because state space contains only 1 and 2. Second, we are observing that it is irreducible. It is irreducible. Okay. The second thing is irreducibility. And third, if you focus upon, there is a self loop from 1 to 1. That means, if you leave one, you can easily uh, return back to one in one steps or in two steps or in three steps or any steps, any number of steps. That means uh, one will have period one. So this chain is aperiodic because it has period one. Similarly, two will have period one since it is irreducible, both will have same period. So this chain which is given to us that is finite Markov chain, irreducible and aperiodic. Now we know that if we have a finite Markov chain which is irreducible and aperiodic, then we will have unique stationary probability distribution. So this implies the existence, the existence of a unique excuse me, stationary probability distribution. So if I call it uh, pi 1, pi 2, okay, such that what we will have? So, such that limit p to the power n, n tending to infinite is nothing but pi 1 pi 1 and pi 2 pi 2. If you remember this result, okay. So, what we are having, we have a finite Markov chain, irreducible Markov chain and a period Markov chain and we know that if this, these three things are there, then 
देर विल बी अक स्टेशनरी प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कॉल इट पाई वन पाई टू देन दिस लिमिट पी टू दावर एन विल बी दिस सो नाउ वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट दैल्यू ऑफ पाई वन पाई टू सो वट इज पाई वन पाई टू इफ यू रिमेंबर दैट द कंडीशन दैट पाई वन पाई टू इज सेम एज पाई वन पाई टू मल्टीप्लाई बाई पी मल्टीप्लाई बाई पी बिकॉज Uh, we have equation pi is equals to pi p this equation must be there then only pi will be a stationary probability distribution so 0.2 0.3 0.8 so you will have two equations pi1 is equals to this row multiply by first column you will have 0.2 pi 1 plus 0.3 pi 2 and second equation you will have pi 2 is equals to 0.8 pi 1 plus 0.7 pi 2 now recall that i have uh, discussed in uh, detail that uh, we have only uh, here we are getting two equations but only one equation is effective because these columns are not linearly independent they are linearly dependent because column sum will be 1 1 so you just consider one of these equations you may discard any one of these equations so i will focus upon this equation first so from first equation from this equation what we will get we will get 0.8 pi 1 is equals to 0.3 pi 2 so if i consider my pi1 as a working variable then pi2 will be 8 divided by 3 pi1 so this we are getting see we are we are not considering this equation we are not considering this equation why because uh, only one equation is effective so we are getting pi2 is equals to 8 by 3 pi1 now we know that pi1 plus pi2 must be 1 so this implies that pi1 plus pi2 pi2 is nothing but 8 by 3 pi1 is 1 which gives us 11 by 3 pi1 is equals to 1 ultimately what we are getting pi1 is equals to 3 by 11 okay so this implies that what is pi2 pi2 is 8 by 3 multiply by 3 by 11 so what we are getting we are getting 8 by 11 okay so p to the power n limit so limit n tending to infinite p to the power n will be as we have said pi 1 in first column pi 2 in second column so this is 3 by 11 3 by 11 and this is 8 by 11 and 8 by 11 so this is the limit of e to the power n so what we are getting we are getting that option a is correct we are getting that option a is correct 3 by 11 3 by 11 8 by 11 8 by 11 so this uh, was a straight forward uh, application of uh, ergodic theorem because uh, our chain is finite markov irreducible and aperiodic then there exists a unique uh, stationary probability distribution with this condition that limit p to the power n is this matrix okay so uh, this is done now we will move towards the second problem which i have taken from csir exam so this was uh, in csir 2018 june exam okay so what it says it says that consider a markov chain having a state space 1 2 3 4 that means again the state space is finite with transition probability matrix this so i have already prepared a transition graph you can see that from 1 to 1 there is a half probability from 1 to 3 there is a half probability and so on so i have prepared this transition diagram you can easily uh, draw this uh, yourself and verify this so now uh, there are two ways to solve this problem 
it it, it has option number one two three four. It is asking about p two two n limit n tending to infinite p two two n and summation n from zero to infinity p two two n. So basically, it is asking two things: whether these values will be zero or one, or this value will be infinite or finite. So one method is very straightforward. So if I just write down method one, see both are very straightforward. So I will discuss both of them because they are very easy to understand. So what method one says? Method one says, okay, you just focus upon p two two, p two two n. Okay. Now see, if you focus upon two. There is uh, four arrows. Three are going outwards. This arrow going outward. This arrow going outward. This arrow going outwards. From two to one, two to four, two to three, and only this arrow, only this arrow is actually uh, coming return. Otherwise, you cannot come back from anywhere else. so that means if you want to start from 2 and if you want to end in 2 the only path is this 2 2 so now anyone can understand if you are doing this in n steps the probability will be 1 by 4 to the power n because in one step the probability is 1 by 4 in second step it will be 1 by 4 in third step it will be 1 it will be 1 by 4 and so on so this will be 1 by 4 to the power n now uh, this clearly implies that Limit p two to n n tending to infinite is nothing but zero, and summation n from zero to infinite p two to n, which is summation n from zero to infinite one by four to the power n. so one can easily verify that uh, this has a value and uh, this is just a geometric series infinite geometric uh, series so you can easily add all these things and find out the value so if you calculate this this comes out to be 4 by 3 because n is equal to 0 it will be 1 1 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 is square and so on so if you just uh, Use the formula a divided by one minus r. That means first term divided by one minus the common ratio. So you will get one divided by one minus one by four. That means one divided by three by four. So that will be four by three. So this is infinite. This is finite. So this is straightforward. That if you can find out p two two n, which is one by four to the power n, because from two. to returning to 2 there is only one path so the, this is very straight forward but uh, i want to discuss second method also because i have discussed the lemma so i i i i want to discuss that lemma here also so use of that lemma method 2 so now you can see that uh, this state 2 one can easily easily uh, understand that state 2 is a transient state okay this is state 2 is a transient state because whenever you will leave 2 and uh, enter into 1 4 or 3 you will never return back so state 2 is a transient state clearly you can verify this also okay so state 2 is actually transient so if it is transient recall that from this lemma uh, which i have discussed here uh, this i have discussed a lemma here recall this lemma what it says it says that let j be a transient state okay of a finite or infinite markov chain and i be any state in the markov chain then p i j n limit n tending to infinite is zero so here in our question i and j both are two and two is a transient state 
So using this lemma 3.1, the answer is straightforward. So what we are doing, we are uh, just uh, writing the, uh, this is transient state, then, then by lemma 3.1, we have limit n tending to infinite p to 2n is 0, okay, number 1. Number 2, since uh, it is transient state, this is 1 and this is 2. Since this is a transient state, we know that uh, summation n from 0 to infinite p to 2n will be finite. This is straightforward. We have already seen that uh, a theorem that if uh, state j is transient, then summation p j j n will be a convergent. This will be a convergent uh, series. If it is uh, recurrent, then this will be a uh, divergent series. So this is a straightforward results. We have seen that. So if you remember the results, if you can remember the results, different theorems. Then you can just apply those things also here. So we are applying here that if state 2 is transient, then P i2, i can be any state, that limit will be 0. And this uh, series will be convergent because uh, we know this also by a theorem. So ultimately what we are getting, we are getting that option number 2 is a correct option because it says that this limit is 0 and this series is finite. So, option 2 is correct answer. So, you can see e easily that these questions are not very difficult. If you have uh, understanding of the basic concepts and you know the idea behind it and uh, if you remember the results, these are very straightforward uh, problems. So, uh, I think uh, it will help you to uh, prepare for your uh, competitive exams also. So, you just try uh, different problems and uh, I will try to discuss uh, as much as uh, I can. So, uh, I will stop here this lecture. Thank you for watching this uh, video.